it's that is very nice. That is yeah. cute. I will treasure so this. Fun. Thank you very much. <laughs> And then Urbashi and then Mota. Yes. And then did you have me? Oh, where is she? Is that? You, me, um, Paige Jenner from Mota as well? Yes. Yes, okay. Mm -hmm. So we're just about ready to get started. Thank you all so much for coming. Um, and apologies for the slightly late start. Um, we are so pleased today to have Marina Ficini here. Uh, this whole event was generously sponsored by Haynes Flutes, um, so we'd like to also thank them. And without further ado, Marina Ficini. Thank you. Thank you. I'm very, very happy to be here and see so many of you that I know and see you again. Um, we were asked to play a little something, and actually we, we've been playing a recital maybe a week or ten days ago. But the pieces are all very big, like Strauss, Wagner, and Sonata, and very long. So we're taking, we're going to take the Lenski aria, which is the version from Leopold Auer, the great violinist, maybe from the 1920s. Uh, so it's from, from the opera Eugene Onegin by Tchaikovsky, and this is the, the, his arrangement of the of the Lenski's aria, and I'm really sorry because it's, <clears throat> it's a very beautiful piece, but it's maybe a little bit of a depressing way to start. <laughs> so I, 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 I hope you don't mind, and we'll be lifted up with the rest of the with Prokofiev yeah. <clears throat>
Peabody, and I'm currently in my final semester at Yale studying with Ransom Wilson. And I'll be playing the third and fourth movements of Prokofiev Sonata. for the last movement, okay. it's, it's more, more tricky. Um, I think it's hard to start, of course, it's the first thing he plays and it's something slow and soft. Yeah. So it is a little bit difficult to, to begin. And also, a little bit psychologically, it's difficult yeah. to start with this, uh, this movement. You're, it's you're in the middle. Huge, it is in the middle, and it has to be a very special moment after yeah. the fury of the second movement. 
it's something so it's it, it should have a different impact and I think it kind of throws you a little bit mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I think that you're doing really beautiful things and I really hear you going for colors and for the shifts and the shadows and 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 all of that and mm -hmm. also for you keeping the tempo yeah I'm sensing that which is great so I really appreciate that uh, my only suggestion is I think that there are times when you are you <laughs> you I know you're playing very well, so <laughs> you, you, you tend to get excited by your excitement. Yeah. Uh, and so there are times when you, it gets a little bit out of control what yeah. you're doing into, into too much agitation. And in the middle part where, where it gets more agitated, you should draw an invisible line through the middle of all of that. Don't let yourself go up and down yeah. with the notes. Try to be barrel through and let them slide like a vibrato, you know, above and below the line. Mm -hmm. That kind of feeling so that you keep your focus and your line. And you don't get excited yeah. by it. Um, I think also that way you can taper off and do the, the A section again at the end in, in a more comfortable way. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Let's just do the very beginning. I, again, maybe it's because it, you just started. Mm -hmm. But to me, the kind of sound, although it was a very beautiful sound, was too robust okay. for the beginning. I, mean, I think you know, you're... Which is a nice sound. There's nothing wrong with it. But I think for the kind of pale shadows you know not, not colors but half shades here so and and I always talk about the piano bass if you yeah. think about the base of the piano and in between when the piano has no bass you have to float from like a pillar from one pillar to the other so It's very glued together, mm -hmm. but it doesn't move a lot. Yeah. That's, it's a nice So just because you have a big sound doesn't mean you have to use it all the time. Yeah. So when you do, then in the last moment you're going to need it. Yeah. So let's go for the last moment because we'll spend some time on it.
told me in the middle to, to stop already. Good. Uh, so this, <laughs> this movement was a little tiny bit ruined for us by David Oistrak, who was a great violinist, yeah. but he had the lousy idea of, of asking uh, Prokofiev if he could play it on the violin. And of course, it's, this movement sounds so easy and great yeah. and strong. And, and we then, by, with all the years, we want to be that. Yeah. We want to compare. So it's, it's raised the standard. It's good, but uh, you know, it's raised the standard. It's made it a little hard. So we have to always remember that we are not a violin mm -hmm. and we cannot have the sustaining power. So what we're good at is, uh, uh, you know, a, a brilliance, alacrity. We, are, we can be very fast and very, very quick mm -hmm. and maybe a little bit bright. Yeah. So use the high register, use the accents, use the momentum more. And I think what I would urge you to do even more that I know you're already doing it, have more separation of the two different tempi. There are two different tempi, two different characters. Yeah. And in the middle part, when it gets very soft, it's still the, the second tempo. Yeah. Um, I don't know why you breathe here. Uh, just one solid thing. This tempo. time between the first and second. One, two, three, and one. Yes, that's one direction, one tempo. So now play what's written with the piano. One, two, three, four. It's much more gripping and, and it and has has a direction, has a statement. And now you've done it. <laughs> right? <laughs> that's that's an outburst. And yeah. later on you're gonna have it an octave higher. Yeah. So give it also a character. Don't don't relax, don't relent with the tempo. You have a whole section where you can do that. Yeah. You if you need to maximize the changes. It's like in the, uh, the third movement. If you play full already at the beginning, when you do play full later, it doesn't, doesn't, doesn't sound that different. Yeah. So from the theory. piano exercise, which they hate. <laughs> da, de, da, da. It's a hand and a, yes. Yeah, it's a hand and exercise. So it's kind of like a um, buffo, you know. <laughs> it is buffo, when you say that? It's comedic? like comedic, yeah, but it's like a little silly almost. Uh -huh. uh, it's, so you, so there's a, again, it's character. Yeah. Character is so important all the time. So now very stable. Now don't let that be budged either. Okay. So you have the very fast thing and now you have this. Think of the lines. Can you play that without the grace notes? It's tongued, right? Oh, sorry, yeah. That's a phrase, you don't breathe before. 
Exactly, grace notes that by by the grace of you know, virtue, it's it's a yeah, and it's they're not that important. Yeah. So right where the flute starts. So I'm sorry. You actually, I hear you go. So you're playing actually a rhythm. Yeah. And we need to hear longer on the low end. Good. And then, okay, good. So now you do actually have to to show it. every time you have the marcato. Yeah. it means a little bit uh, that you're you're slowing down. Mm -hmm. It's it's actually a very compact beginning. Yeah, because there are the, these two different. Uh, well, there are more than two ideas, but these ideas are are very clear for a while, and then he starts putting it all together in mm -hmm. a very uh, reduced manner. So it's concentrated. So if you have a lot of clarity right from the beginning yeah. about the different the the character. The tempo, the character, the phrasing, where to breathe. When you start putting it together, it still retains its clarity, mm -hmm. and it just becomes actually exciting because it's happening faster. Yeah. Uh, but the tempos are really, really important. So I keep doing this because, um, and again, you know, uh, Amir used to be much more like this. I used to be up in the clouds. So it's good when you when you, you start conducting yourself like this, you actually take away from the, the power, mm -hmm. the linear power that you have. Yeah. You have a big, big sound, and uh, it's it's good, and the tonguing is good. Yeah. Tonguing is really uh, uh, coming, cutting through. So, I think I have to stop. So, uh, this is not but two movements is very ambitious. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. people are watching at home that have a score. I have a little, little announcement to make. Uh, this is actually very funny. But, but there are a misprints in, 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 this, uh, in the Uobayashi Sonata. And, um, uh, and yeah, and they, they happen. And it's very funny because some of the misprints that, that are there, uh, even Uobayashi wasn't aware of. And, and when I was working with her, it was really interesting because I played was the third one, right? Yeah. The, I played a passage in the third one, and she said, oh, it's, it's, it's too soft. And I said, no, it's not too soft. And she said, no, no, it's too soft. Here I am arguing with the composer. <laughs> no, it's not too soft, it's piano. <gasps> no, it's mezzo piano. Well, my part says piano. <gasps> Mistake. And it made me realize how sensitive she is to, to the, what is written. What she writes in the score is precisely what she wants. So the phrasing is very important, where the, where the ties are, 
um, the, the dynamics are very important, the tempi are really, really correct. It's not every composer that, that's that careful, and it's a, it's a gift to be able to, to work with a composer and have this re revelation. So now that I know that she's like this, when I do other pieces, uh, or even that piece, I'm, I'm very, very careful about it. So one of the first misprints is right at the beginning. Uh, can you play what's, what's, well, what's written is, yeah. I'll play. Actually, the flute part has two mistakes, right? So that G sharp is re tongue, but it's not. It's actually tied over. It should be. I'm oh, sorry. What you see here, what a difference it is. It's a color change, but there is. It's a suspended thing, and it's a, it's a big deal. <laughs> I mean, we think it's a big deal. Um, and it was very cute because I was I was pretty sure that was right. And this this morning we were we were working together a little bit, and I said, you know what, let me just text her. <laughs> and immediately I got a text back and saying, no, 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 it's a tie, it's a tie. Make sure. So I want to make sure everybody who plays this in the future knows the first mistake. The rhythm is the rhythm that's in the score, not in the flute part, and it is tied over. It seems such a shame to make a mistake right at the beginning of a piece, right? Yeah. So. <laughs> Hi, my name is Yerim Choi, and I'm studying with Marina at Peabody, Peabody right now. And I'm playing Webayashi first and second movement. Thank you. 